Welcome everybody to Secret Sauce, the show where we unpack business tips, life hacks, and advice from industry leaders. I'm Carly Iacono. Today, I am joined by Aaron Zucker of Zig Investments. He is the founder of this boutique commercial real estate investment firm and is joining us today to talk about his strategies and thoughts on the market. Welcome, Aaron. How are you? So nice to see you today. Great seeing you too. Appreciate you having me. How are you doing? I am amazing. Amazing. Pleasure to see you in advance of next week's ICSC. We're doubling down. Yeah, it's going to be a fun time. Looking forward Great to it. Great to connect. So why don't we kick it off with a little background on Zig, why you started it, and kind of how this all came to be. Sure. So I like to tell people I'm just the leasing agent schmuck who turned into a property owner. I got into commercial real estate by accident, like a lot of other people. I owned a bar in college and caught wind of how well our landlord was doing. Also connected with some family friends that suggested you should be a leasing agent at retail shopping centers. And between the entrepreneurial exposure that I had with the bar thing, um, originally when I was, when I was younger and then, uh, understanding how shopping centers are bought and, and how they're put into special purpose entities. I quickly learned that that was something that I wanted to do. And fast forward a few years later, had to learn the fundamentals of leasing, obviously still learning every day. And, uh, had, a, had an opportunity with a family office in Florida to sort of become a big fish in a small pond and see how they operate. I, I felt like I knew enough to be dangerous and was at that inflection point in my career where it's like, okay, just stay working for someone else and have a, a great career doing that or, or sort of take a major step back financially and from a risk perspective and go out on my own. And of course, since I'm an idiot, I chose the latter and here we are. Uh, so we started zigging at the end of 2018 and have been at it ever since. I love it. I don't know how you go up from owning a bar in college. You had to be the, the most popular sought after person on campus. It's pretty... You know, it's funny. So I did it with some friends. It's funny. Girls that I was not attractive to one day, I all of a sudden became attractive to overnight. Right. right. Out why. Weird. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So somehow you've managed to go beyond that pivotal experience to something else big. Not surprised. So congrats on founding Zig. It, it's been fun to, to watch you grow the company. Thank you. So with this new venture and your experience as a leasing agent, entrepreneur, family office, it's a lot of good synergistic uh, background coming together. What's your thoughts on the market right now? Where do you see opportunity? We are seeing opportunity in a few different places. We are big believers in vacant out parcels. Love those mm -hmm. profile deals. Uh, between the DNA of our company being tied to leasing and hopefully finding some sellers here and there that are ready to unload property, especially, you know, my thesis is if I'm sitting in their shoes, if I haven't leased it over the last couple of years, it's probably not getting leased anytime soon. And so we definitely see some of those deals that uh, aren't a fit for really, in my opinion, anybody, if we're not prepared to take on that risk, maybe, maybe there's a bottom feeder buyer who's it's exclusively tied to basis, but we basically will buy any deal that we feel like we can lease and we'll do that uh, all cash on spec if need be with quick closing terms, provided that we're being rewarded for the right basis. So I think there's real opportunity there. I really think there's there's big opportunity as well in the income producing product soon. It, I don't think we're there quite yet. I, I think, and I'd be, love to get your thoughts on this and because I always like talking to the, to the better brokers about this, but we're not quite seeing the connectivity between where a seller is because they're still looking at appraisals and historicals and comps and where buyers are because of what they're feeling with interest rate hikes. And I think one thing that isn't being talked about enough too is, is the, the, the unwinding of the accelerated depreciation program. I think that's mm -hmm. going to affect pricing a lot more than people are talking about for whatever reason. Um, maybe that's just my crazy thesis, but that's what we're seeing out there. And that's where I think the opportunities are on the income producing stuff at high yield uh, and provided that you can add value through increasing the NOI over time, or you're just buying it at a great cap rate and then refinancing later when interest rates, if and when interest rates come back down again. Okay. Let's unpack this a little bit. So the first thing you mentioned were the vacant out parcels. Is this any single tenant out parcel type? Or are you focused on QSR with drive throughs We look at sit down restaurants. What's your concept of the previous use and are you willing to convert it if necessary absolutely willing to convert it we prefer okay. a drive-through we do not buy exclusively drive-throughs we bought a vacant party city box 
hmm. not too far from you in Long Island last year from a REIT that was looking to unload it and feel really good about chopping that space up. It's got great dimensions. We bought a vacant bank building uh, in the Columbus market recently that, that we have a lease out for Signature on, knock on wood as I say that, that, uh, that we feel really good about. So going from a bank to a restaurant, chopping up a party city to shop space, we bought covered land play deals with full service sit down restaurants that we feel like we can retenant and just get creative. But the real estate drives it more than the former use. And we're, we're really aggressively attacking those opportunities when, when we can find them because they're few and far between. It, they are. It's really difficult to find vacant parcels that, that make sense. So kudos to you for digging those up. Have you encountered a lot of pushback from these various towns if you're trying to change the use or has it been fairly seamless? So one unique part of our strategy is that we're very geographically agnostic. And so we see okay. we see all sorts of lovely people to deal with that want months and months and fees and fees and difficulties and difficulties. And then some markets are like, great, come on down. You know, we yeah. love to have you. And, and, and it, we have, we're all over the board, right? Okay. Um, not not going to get into spe specific municipalities, but some places are easier to get deals done than others. And I'll leave it at that. Yeah, exactly. I, I know what you mean. Um, and then in terms of the the buying all cash uh, and refining out later, is that are you finding more success there than trying to navigate the debt markets now? Is I think you were alluding to that. We really push to only go to lenders when we feel like they can help us and not necessarily when we desperately need them. Okay. So, so it's a short term lease and we're not able to get an extension done before closing, which, by the way, we close on those deals all the time. Uh, there's. Oftentimes we'll just buy those cash and if we feel like the, the rent's extremely replaceable or there's an opportunity to create value in some way, shape or form, sort of figure it out later. Same thing goes with the vacancy ones. I mean, the ones that are vacant, banks aren't really excited. We try to go to the bank when they're excited to do business with us. So therefore we can create as much value for uh, the, the equity in the deal as possible. Okay. Interesting. And then how are you looking at your hold period or even better question, how are you underwriting deals on the acquisition and hold given the rise in interest rates, construction costs going up, if you have TI money involved, how are you kind of factoring all of that in for both underwriting and your hold period? Yeah. So we'll start with the hold period. If we, we have yet to do a floating rate deal on any asset that we bought, I don't really foresee that changing anytime soon. I'm not going to use the word never, but that's just not something that is within like our core values of what we're looking for on the financial side. Mm -hmm. So I would say knowing what you're getting into going into it, because you don't see tenants rents fluctuating up and down very often. I mean, I guess with retenanting you could, but in, in theory, the rent is typically X, right? And you want your interest rate to be Y. So that way, you know what you're getting into. And we've even paid premiums on rates back when they were super low to get longer term debt. And right. I'm really glad that we did that. I don't, I yeah, I mean, it was something that, you know, I guess every once in a while, you know, like blind squirrel finds a nut. We, we made a, we made a, we had a thesis and it, it's, it's worked out for us. Um, as far as the, to address your point about construction costs, TI, my retailer friends out there are going to be mad at me and cringe if they hear this. So if you're if you're a retailer, you can hit mute for about the next 15, 20 seconds. But we're really trying to push back on work letters and not do them at all. Yeah. And, and instead, just be like, look, just, just like guess on the high side. I, I'm a big I'm terrible at construction. So like hand up. I, it's probably not something that I should admit in a public forum, but <laughs> not a strength. Of mine. I'm really good at understanding if I type something into an Excel sheet and I know that that's where it is, then I'm, I'm even I'm capable enough to understand what that looks like. So we're really trying to write TI checks. Again, I want to be very clear. We're happy to invest in the tenant spaces where it's warranted and where the deal can support it. Uh, and the credit profile is there to justify it. We're just really trying to push back whenever possible. Hey, here's a work letter. Look, dude, I'm sitting in Charlotte. This property is in Missouri or New York or something. You're doing a bunch of deals there. Why don't you hire your contractor? Tell us what you think it's going to cost and we'll write a check. Of course, we will do work letters. We're not going to lose a deal over it, especially with the right tenant. But uh, it's it's far more in our favor to understand what we're getting into and not have to deal with all the nuances and complexities associated with construction. Definitely, definitely the easier path. Now, are either of these two factors affecting your investment thesis when it comes to the whole period? Have you pulled it shorter or longer? Or are you just looking at everything long term, irrespective of economic conditions? How are you considering 
I, I don't want to get on your show and sound like the smartest person to ever come down here. So I'm going to make sure I say something incredibly elementary here, which is we really only sell the property when we believe it's worth the most as much of a ridiculous okay. to make. We, we, what I, what I mean by that is every deal has its own business plan. We have covered land plays that, you know, the tenant or tenants may have options and the, the rent's so substantially below market that we were comfortable realizing that the real IRR drive is not going to be until way down the line. And we have some deals that we bought a deal earlier this year on March 31st and we were out of it by, we were out of it 60 days later. Wow. We paid gains on it. Um, That's a quick quote. Really, yeah. I wasn't really interested in running cap rate sensitivity risk in 12 months. And mm -hmm. I, that I really believed in the real estate long term. And it was something that I felt great about managing and operating years and years down the line would be misleading. And so that was a quick flip. We took advantage of uh, record cap rates at that time. And so. Yep. Whatever, whatever the deal needs to do, it'll do everything that we own is for sale. And um, we're not really in a position where we have to sell anything. Do you have a favorite deal from the last 12 months? You know, I really, I really like this one in Columbus that I referenced earlier. Again, knock, knock, that lease is out for execution with a, with a emerging restaurant group. That's got quite a few locations, excellent credit. Real estate fundamentals are great. They really fit the Zig profile of what we're looking for. And mm -hmm. I think it'll be a really good case study for us. It's not going to be a deal that we make a ridiculous amount of money on, but it's going to be a really, um, it's going to be a good story and something that, you know, that our team is going to be really, really proud of, I think. So stay Excellent. tuned on that. Yeah. We'll look for the full, full deal story when it's all baked. There you good go. Money. Yeah, there exactly. You. So before we move on to your personal advice and life hack, anything else on the market or your company that you'd like to share? Sure. We are aggressively growing. We're seeing this, I guess, fringe of the recession starting to take place and we see opportunities. So we're hiring, we're looking for more acquisitions associates to chase single tenant net lease deals that are either vacant or income producing with a value add component. And then we're also searching for a director on the multi-tenant side who can come down and procure leads and, and see deals across the finish line from from a shopping center acquisition perspective and we're really looking forward to this assuming it occurs recession as an opportunity for us to really grow and, and take advantage of it i'm so excited and happy for all my friends and brokerage who have made a ton of money over the last few years and we've been doing some deals but i, I really think that I'm, I'm optimistic that there'll be major opportunity for zig here in the near future so that's what I would say on the market and anybody out there who's got a good value add retail deal, we want to see it and we're prepared to do whatever we need to do to get to the top of your list to see it. All um, right. Good, of course, good of course PR they push. Through, now they have to run it through Carly because Carly's got this wonderful platform and does such a great job of putting thing, putting everything out there. Obviously everything must come through me from here forward. I, I did mention that before you came on the show, right? There you go. Exactly. Um, love it. So moving on to your personal advice, life hack, business tip, what words of wisdom do you have for us today? So from a actionable, like what can I do tonight or tomorrow morning standpoint, of course, I'm never, I've never been one to be creative enough to come up with my own ideas. So I'm no problem uh, plagiarizing here. Got this one from Mark Thompson, um, who runs a, an investment sales shop down in Orlando. He came on to a panel that Beth Azor and I were co-leading during the pandemic for people that were less than five years in the business. And he changed my life because he offered up this idea where I, I like reading. So I, 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 and I don't really read fiction. I, I read exclusively with the idea to either get better as an entrepreneur or, or to really to help our companies in any way, shape or form. And he turned me on to this idea, which is total life hack. And you should try it if you haven't, if you're a reader, you seem like a reader where you get a physical copy of the book. I get mine from the library because I'm cheap and I don't want it to take up a bunch of space in my house. And then I download, the, the audio version on Audible or wherever you get your books. I've even heard that there's, there's apps that do it for free. And what you do is you read the physical copy of the book while you're listening to it. And you can what you can do is you can do it at a higher speed. And huh. so that allows you to get through the book faster so you can learn more. And you're also engaging both your vision and your hearing so you retain the information better. Interesting. And that's been huge for me. So that's like my life hack one. And then 
the wisdom or, or lack thereof, again, stealing it from my grandparents is know your why. So for me, you know, I've told this a few times and it, it never seems to fail as far as either getting chills or, or potential tears down my face, but my grandparents were Holocaust survivors. And so oh I sort of wake up every day and think about, you know, there's, there's times where I'm like, man, life's hard and I'm really working hard or, and this isn't working and we're not seeing enough deal flow. And I can't believe this person hung up on me and this person won't call me back. You know, poor me. And it's one of those things where when you think about making a few extra calls or taking a connecting flight at four 30 in the morning or whatever it may be, it may sound difficult in that moment, but when you put it into perspective of thinking about like, for me, what my grandparents went through surviving the Holocaust and Auschwitz, albeit you, you, you kind of know that uh, it, it, what, what we're going through, the fact that you and I are even able to have a conversation like this over, over this platform, like it ain't that bad. Yeah. And, and that is extremely inspiring and extremely motivating for me because the way I look at it is I shouldn't be here to begin with. Like statistically speaking, shouldn't have made it. Like I, I shouldn't have been Amazing. I mean, yeah. what my grandparents went through and then for them to have been able to immigrate to North America and then from my parents, my, my dad in particular, to be able to pull off what he did and create a life for himself. And, and so I look at it like, I, you know, I'm playing with house money and there was a door that was cracked for me that shouldn't have been cracked. And it's my job to fulfill their legacy by running right through that crack door. So that's my why. I think everybody has one and you just have to really do some soul searching to find it. And if you keep that as sort of like a, a pillar or a core value at the forefront of your mind every day, it, it, it makes you know, losing a deal feel pretty insignificant and allows you to sort of keep focus on what really matters. I'm so happy you shared that. Thank you. It was um, very touching and great perspective, I think, for everybody. And like you said, everyone has their own why, but that's a, that's a pretty big one from your perspective. So thank you again for sharing that with all of us. Thank um, you. Wonderful insights. Loved hearing your story, how you grew the company and your investment thesis. I have no doubt it will be a fantastic upcoming year for you and for Zig. I'm sure you will find some fantastic opportunities. So we'll make sure everyone has your contact information. And of course, anyone watching, feel free to reach out directly. We appreciate you tuning into the show. Aaron, thank you so much for coming on as a guest. Great to see you and uh, hope we can chat again soon. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I love what you're doing. Everybody loves what you're doing and it's, it's extremely valuable. And I uh, can't thank you enough for having me. Thank you so much. Much appreciated to everyone watching. That was Secret Sauce. We hope to see you again very soon. Have a great day.